Hey guys, so today we're going to look at a little bit more at the graphs of our, trans, uh, of our logarithmic functions. Specifically, we're going to start looking at transformations of logarithmic functions. Now, when you're going through the next few videos, you should have already had a bit of a review on what our different types of transformations are because we looked, we've already looked at exponential graphs, but we're also going to break those down again here. So the learning target we're going to work on is I can identify transformations of function, functions, excuse me, given the graph, the equation, or the graph. So next we're going to talk about dilations of functions, or um, we've also known these as uh, a stretch or compression, or a stretch or a shrink of a function. So dilations happen when we are multiplying um, in our uh, multiplying to our parent function. Um, and there's a couple of different places we can multiply to make a dilation happen. Um, so there's two types of dilations. We have vertical um, stretches or shrinks, and then horizontal stretches or shrinks, um, where a shrink is just a compression. Um, and this moves the points, but really only the x-intercept might change, and it doesn't every time. Um, but the rest of our um, characteristics actually stay the same because we're not um, with a, a dilation. This is not going to be any type of reflection, um, though you can have both a dilation and a reflection. The dilation part itself does not change any end behavior. Um, it doesn't change the domain. It doesn't change the range. And sometimes, again, it doesn't even change the x-intercept. Um, there are certain cases where it does, and we'll talk about those when we get there. So let's start by talking about a vertical dilations. So vertical dilations happen when you have something like this equation, f of x equals c times the log of base b of x. Um, if that's the absolute value of that c is greater than 1, then that's going to vertically stretch the graph of f of x. So what that'll look like is something like here, where you notice that we've got the points um, of the same color, those are, are the points that are in the same place on our graph. They've just um, happened to have that stretch happening. So the red function is our f of x equals log base 2 of x, just like we've been using in the other videos. And our blue function is g of x equals 2 times the log base 2 of x. So what that's doing is that's multiplying every y value from log base 2 of x by 2. So the x values stay the same, but the y value is multiplied by 2. So that's why here that point is actually exactly the same, our green point, um, because the y value was 0. When you multiply 0 by 2, it's still 0. Versus here my, uh, my y value was 2, and when that, that gets multiplied by 2 for my purple points, now I have a y value of 4 from the same x. So let's take a look at our characteristics. While the domain stays the same, it's still from 0 to infinity. We still have the vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Still have a range from negative infinity to positive infinity. The x-intercept is still 1, 0. And the end behavior, in fact, is also still exactly the same as the parent function because none of these characteristics actually change. Um, now it is increasing at a faster rate because you're multiplying it by two, but it is not, none of the these base characteristics we've been talking about have changed when multiplying um, for our vertical stretch. Let's think about a vertical shrink or a vertical compression. That's going to happen same place um, for multiplying, where we're multiplying outside of the logarithm. And that's going to happen if the absolute value of that c is between 0 and 1. So if we're multiplying by a decimal that's less than 1, or if we're multiplying by a fraction that's less than 1. So something like this. So if we have, again, log base 2 of x as our parent function, 1 half log base 2 of x. So it makes sense, because you're multiplying each of those y values from the log base 2 of x times a half. So you're cutting each of those in half. So again, it makes sense that it would shrink this down. It would push this um, each of those points down by 1 half. So let's think about those characteristics. And again, just like the last one, 
each of those characteristics stays exactly the same as our parent function. So we still have the same domain, the same asymptotes, the same range. It's still increasing forever, but it's increasing at a slower rate this time. That's really all that's happening here. The end behavior stays the same. So really all of these characteristics for vertical dilations are exactly the same. Let's think about horizontal dilations. So a horizontal dilation is going to happen when we have something like log base B of C times X. So now we're multiplying the X times um, some number. Um, and so this is where things kind of switch a little bit, but they look very similar. So a horizontal dilation is going to happen. Um, a shrink is going to happen or a compression horizontally happens when the absolute value of C is greater than one. So just like we have here in our graph. So again, the red parent function is our log base two of X. And then our, um, our blue child function is log base two of two times X. So we're multiplying each of those X values times two. So you'll notice what happens is actually every single point moves to the left, um, or those x values move to the left by 2. But it's really just shrinking. The y value is staying the same, but it's shrinking it in. It's it's compressing in. Um, think about if you were like pushing your hands together in front of you as hard as you possibly could. It's shrinking them in that way. So what about these characteristics? Well, you'll notice that the domain is still from 0 to infinity. We still have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. The range is still from negative infinity to positive infinity, but this time we have an x-intercept that is different. We have an x-intercept since we're multiplying the x value and not the y value. We have an x-intercept at one half zero, where our parent function had the x-intercept at one zero. The end behavior here as x goes to infinity, um, your f of x is going to infinity, so it's going up to the f forever to the right. To the left, we only go to zero, we can't go past zero, um, and the f of x is going down forever to a negative infinity. Let's take a look then at if that c is between zero and one. Well, if the c is between zero and one, then we'll horizontally be stretching the graph. So we're stretching it sideways, um, not up and down, so horizontally stretching it sideways. So think about if you had um, uh, a rubber band in front of you and you were trying to stretch it out to the left and right as far as it could possibly go. That's going to be a visual of um, a horizontal stretch for yourself. Now, here's what your graph would look like, where again, we have log base two of x as our parent function. Um, and if we are using um, our blue function, our child function is log base two of one half x. So we're multiplying each of those x's by one half. So notice here that the y value, um, these y values are the same, but it's getting the, the x values are getting stretched out. Um, horizontally. They're getting pulled out horizontally. So what happens to our characteristics here? Do domain stays the same, zero to infinity. Still have that vertical asymptote as x equals zero. Still have our range from negative infinity to positive infinity. But that x-intercept, again, just like with our horizontal shrink or horizontal compression, that x-intercept change changes. Um, and in this case, it changed to, to two, zero. And then our end behavior stays the same as the parent function since we didn't do any flipping or moving. So the only um, the only characteristic that changed for us here was our x-intercept. Everything else stays the same. So with dilations, vertical dilations, none of the characteristics change, but the points change, just not our x-intercept. Um, and then for our horizontal dilations, the uh, only one of our characteristics that changes is our x-intercept. All of our other characteristics stay the same, but we also have to think about that shrink and stretch.